Hey guys, Poro here with another video, this time with the second video in my 5 off-meta champion series. Like last time, I'll be covering a specific role, and picking 5 of my favorite off-meta champions to play in that role. Top is already done, and you all voted for support to be the next role, so enjoy my 5 off-meta supports to run it down with. To kick off the list, I want to start off with the good old classic support style, Engage. This playstyle is great, but there's one issue. How many times have you been playing an Engage champ, and you've found the perfect 3 or 4 man knockup or stun, only for the play to still go wrong because your team just didn't have the right follow-up damage? Building full lethality or full AP isn't a great option, since you'd usually just be instantly one-shot upon going in, or if you made even the slightest mistake beforehand. There is, however, one item that would work really well to remedy this issue, and that item is Black Cleaver. Cleaver comes with decent tankiness, and the passive will shred up to 30% armor from targets hit by the user. If a support could build this, it would be the difference maker they needed to help their ADC output the damage to win those fights. There is a caveat though, which is that Black Cleaver has two prerequisites to gaining full value. While Black Cleaver itself can reduce up to 30% armor, it comes in increments of 6% with each stack applying from each new instance of damage. A champion like Pike can't build this because he only deals 2 or maybe 3 instances of damage in his main engage. Also because Pike seals off lethality and hates Cleaver anyway, but that's irrelevant. Other engaged champions who engage onto multiple people like Leona, Nautilus, Alistar, and Rel might also love an item like this. The problem is that all of their big AoE abilities do magic damage, and Black Cleaver stacks only proc when physical damage is done. When you look even further, even the physical damage support struggle to build this. Poppy and Pantheon can both get full value from the item almost instantly, but their damage is usually single target, meaning they only shred armor from the one person they engage on. It seems like Cleaver is just difficult to build on support champions. Nobody can meet every requirement. Either they lack AoE, only do magic damage, or can't apply enough instances to get full value. There is one champion though who meets all of those requirements, and has an excellent engage to pair with it, and that champion is Wukong. The idea is simple. Wukong's ult strikes up to 16 times on every target hit, and it's all physical damage, meaning you'll proc Black Cleaver for full value almost guaranteed. The ult is also an AoE knockup, meaning you can get multiple people's armor shredded. On top of that, Wukong's Q shreds an additional 30% onto a single target, meaning you get to pick one enemy who loses a whopping 51% armor. Wukong's engage is also very strong due to his access to E, W, and Flash all being dashes. The game plan is to use the dashes to engage, get his ult on multiple people, and shred all of their armor so your team can do the rest of the work. Now the only question is if Wukong is decent enough at everything else a support needs to do. In terms of lane pressure, Wukong is completely fine. Due to his E and his passive, early levels are always strong from his extra tankiness and attack speed steroid. Outtrading a Wukong in an extended fight is very difficult. While he might not have kill pressure before level 6, it's very hard to beat him in a straight on fight, and he's also very slippery to kill from ganks. Roams before 6 also have the same issue, since Wukong lacks any CC before level 6, but once he has ult, he's good to go. Warding and face checking isn't too bad for Wukong either, since he can easily slot in tanky items like the aforementioned Black Cleaver, as well as other items like Locket. He can use his W dash and invisibility to safely survive any bush traps when looking for vision. All in all, Wukong might be a bit underwhelming in some ways, but the upside of the engage is well worth it to give the Monkey King a shot. This is a pretty good game for Wukong. Smolder Nami, Orianna, fairly a low backline, and then you have Mordekaiser, Skarner, armor stacking frontline. Usually, whenever I play Wukong, I like to kind of full send at level 1, but against Smolder with Fleet and then Nami, I feel like they're just going to slow heal it back up. They took level 2 at the exact same moment we did. Barrier from the smolder. Okay, we're throwing hands, Jesus. I like it. Okay, I got the aura to flash. And we just kill the Skarner. Nice. I'll pretend I didn't see the Nasus. You know, if I was the Nasus, I would have done the exact same thing, so I totally get it. Let's see if I can cancel the base here. Ooh, hello. We can cancel both bases. 
I cancel both of their bases again. Oh, it's so worth. It's mega worth. My Cassio is also probably pretty close to my- Oh yeah, she just took six. Huge. Why can't I play Rel? Because Rel is meta. That defeats the entire point of the video. Zero head. Also because Wukong is like way better at dueling than Rel is. He just like deals way more damage. So it's nice for when I just don't feel like relying on my bot laner to do anything. Like my bot laner can run it down and if I'm playing Black Cleaver Wukong, I still have agency in the game. What about Quinn support? You can get vision every 40 seconds. True! Oh my gosh, I never thought about that one. As a Quinn main who played her in every role, you can say the Quinn support's actually really funny. Oh wait, that's Smolder's so boom. What am I flashing away from? Mole? If I, if I had noticed that Smolder had no mana, I never would have flashed there. Okay, I wish Cass would stop hard shoving. If she let it bounce back once, we could just like hard punish them. Okay. Or she can just 1v2 them. You know what? That works too. Anyways. Can Rel support do that? And we got the kill of Nami. Nice. I'm dead. Chat. Honestly, Bloodsong might be kind of crazy. I've been going Celestial like for the damage reduction, but Bloodsong could be really nice. So what you're telling me is that I can now QR somebody, shred off 51% of their armor, and they take 10% more damage. Okay, that, that just kind of sounds nasty. If I had my ult, we'd probably win that. Oh, I died a burn. Oh, not even close. Oh. Wait, I'm not dead? How am I not dead? Nice, good kill. Damn, we just fucking cleaned them. Okay. Right. How much damage is my Blood Song done? Oh, oh, yeah, this thing is definitely worth it. 1500 just from the amp? Celestial opposition Wukong is dead to me. Why is this Mord so addicted to bush trapping, though? That's my question. Okay, I bet he stopped in that bush, too. 
Yep. And to the surprise of absolutely nobody. I guess nobody could follow up on that. Yeah, that was bad. <laughs> Listen, I saw the window to get a three-man mock-up, and, and, and my, I just went monkey brain Uga Booga, and I just went for it. But yeah, no, that was, that was definitely terrible. <laughs> That was a good Wukong ult. For every terrible Wukong ult, we have a good one. It's fine. And they surrender. While engaging and frontlining in teamfights is for some people, others like to provide kill pressure and poke immediately in lane. That's where my second pick for today's list comes in, Zoe. I've been a huge advocate for supports valuing kill pressure. I think when a support can offer high base damage in lane, it helps the bot do a gain priority. Picks like Lux, Karma, and Xerath have always been especially good at this, for example. Zoe's support has a few unique advantages. Her E is an easy place to start, being a fast, straight-line skillshot bubble that sleeps the target it hits. The bubble itself deals damage, and the target takes additional damage when struck by any attack while sleeping. This tool becomes especially strong when paired with her Q, a skill shot that gets stronger the farther it is away from the target. What makes this ability interesting for support specifically is how high the base damage is. Even if Zoe has 0 AP, the base damage of her EQ combo deals as much as 885 damage plus a 30% magic penetration applied to the 425 from the Q while the target is asleep. For a champion with no AP, that kind of damage on two abilities is ridiculous, especially since landing the E usually means the Q is a free hit. This also doesn't factor in her enhanced auto attack that she gets to cast upon using any ability. All of this means that Zoe doesn't actually need gold to provide significant damage to games. Slap a Ludens onto her and she already has the ability to take squishies out of fights entirely with one combo. Her usefulness for support goes past the high damage as well. Her ultimate blinks her to a location and then quickly blinks her back, meaning Zoe can ward locations that are dangerous for other squishy supports to step up to such as Dragon Pit, Baron Pit, and Enemy Bushes. An opponent who happens to be there will have very little time to react, and even if they do, Zoe still has the extra layer of safety from the automatic blink back to where she started. The lane phase is fairly straightforward. Even at levels 2 and 3, Zoe's kill pressure is very high. With this pressure, you gain prio in most matchups unless you miss E. Holding onto E can be a valid way to keep pressure, but there are also a number of walls Zoe can use to her advantage in lane. Zoe's E has a cast distance, but this distance is increased when she throws the ability through a wall. The two long walls in bot lane are great for Zoe bubble snipes, and you can catch enemies off guard with this. Landing a bubble early game, followed by a decently ranged Q, is usually enough to chunk someone for over half of their health or even more. It's very easy to gain control in an instant with a pick like this, even faster than landing a Luxroot or Karma Mantra Q would be. Of course, the biggest weakness is that when you miss E, you're effectively useless until it comes back up, much like a Blitzcrank Q. Once you get into mid and late game, it's all about playing for chip damage around Vision. Most skirmishes occur in the jungle, so taking advantage of vision and the numerous walls is how you win games. Chunking people out before objective fights, or even straight up one-shotting squishies is very possible with the limited support item income. My report for Psychopathic Poro hashtag Poro has been submitted. Sweet! Okay, that's Flash from the Kaiza. There has to be a Zac here, right? Oh, yeah. I have bubble innate and ignite. We could like keep the aggressive positioning maybe.
Oh, I missed. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. <laughs> You're kidding, wait, oh my god, I like, outplayed myself so hard. I have 14 stacks of Dark Harvest. Make that 15. This is actually tough, I don't know where Zach is. Never mind. The drawback, if you're not Giga Fed and Zoe support, you can use. Uh, actually, no. One of the upsides of Zoe support is that if you go Zack Zack Ludens, you always have damage. Like, you always have meaningful damage. What are we playing Elise support? So I'm not playing Elise support because I don't want to double dip champions. Elise support is really good, but I already did Elise for my off meta top lane video. Elise top, Elise support, Elise mid. It's like, I, I, I just don't want to do that. Oh, I died to minions. I, I survived the ignite and then died to minions. No. Have I tried Silas support before? Uh, if I said I had Silas prepped for a different role, because I would do Silas support if I wasn't planning on doing Silas bot. You know what? At least I got damage on Nami before I died. Maybe it's good. That was a uh, that was a nice E flash from Yasuo. Oh, hit! Ah, yeah. oh, I'm dead again. I'm such an inter bro. Sad. I was a little bit faster, I killed Renekton there. Oh, that was a terrible bubble to miss. And I died of the slow. Dude, Nami's ultimate is kind of crazy. Oh, and less. Okay, nice. Wait, I should have died there. 100% I should have died there. Oh! 
Oh, now they got popped. Okay. Wait, we're popping off. You wish Spellbook was one champion's main keystone? Yeah, it's Kane's main keystone. Everybody else is just wrong. I guess we end instead of Baron. Is that is that what's going on? Is this an end angle? I mean, like, it's their two soul. Like, maybe we can. We can probably end. If I just, like, can hit my bubbles, we end the game. Although, easier said than done against Yasuo. Or if Renekton just gives up. Where is he? Okay, never mind. Renekton gave up. Cool. Alright, well, that was an anticlimactic way to win that game, but. We'll take it. We've covered engage supports, and we've covered mage supports. The only main area left to find a champion for is enchanter, and luckily I have just the pick. Most enchanters are found in the support role to begin with, and there's very few healing and shielding champs who haven't found themselves as a support main at some point. There are exceptions though, and one of those exceptions is Nidalee. Nidalee's function as a support comes twofold. The first is her lane pressure. All supports have to have some kind of element of lane pressure to succeed properly unless you want to permanently forfeit push to the enemy bot lane, and Nidalee does this through a combination of her high damage spears and generous all-in kill thresholds with cougar form. Nidalee can also use cougar form to roam around the map very quickly due to her W's low cooldown, meaning she can pressure multiple lanes very easily if given the opportunity. The real crowning jewel of Nidalee's support though is her human E, which casts a single target heal. The cool thing about this heal is that compared to other healing supports like Soraka or Sona, Nidalee's heal simply outclasses them in terms of value on instant cast. Soraka can of course cast a heal with a much shorter cooldown, and Sona's heal is in an AoE that also provides a shield, but in terms of upfront instant value, Nidalee's heal has by far the highest base value and scaling. It also comes equipped with an attack speed steroid, granting the target up to 70% bonus attack speed at rank 5, meaning it pairs amazingly with a lot of different marksmen. Going 3 points in Q early for the pressure, followed by E max, is a great way to make an impact in any game. In the example game, I ended up putting 4 points in Q by accident, but just ignore that. Nidalee has some other great support tools, such as her ability to easily face check. Her spear and traps are a great way to scout bushes effectively, with the latter even granting vision for a short period of time upon placing them. Objective setups are fairly easy with her. Where Nidalee really shines is her build. Her kit perfectly synergizes with items like Moonstone and Staff of Flowing Water, as she can pump out massive heals while also buffing her allies, while also being able to take full advantage of the buffs herself. Her E also works nicely with Ardent Sensor, which adds an additional 25% attack speed steroid to the mix on top of her base 70%. I also like to add on items like Redemption or Dawncore, and the healing can get really out of control really quickly. If you're looking for a new dynamic healer to try out, Nidalee is a great option. You don't like Wukong, you're not saying it's broken, it's just incredibly boring to watch and play against. Okay, well, you're incredibly boring to watch and play against. How about that? Is this Vigar Lux bot lane? Is that what I'm looking at right now? Well, against two squishy champions like this, essentially how it goes is I land one spear and we win lane. I mean, they both have flash TP. Lux is oom. Yeah, I kind of want to flash on one of them really badly. Alright, there's double flash from them. Nice. Not nice. There we go. I have led my tribe for generations. Okay. I don't know why Vigar stayed there. Also, when Lux comes back. Yeah. Hit her with a nice chunk.
sad. Kenya's is still just chilling by. Ooh, and Lux went mid. Okay, cool. I can actually take a a trip top side of here. Let's get a ward for him and then leave. Oh, fine. Jesus, man. That's Scarter ult. Kane is coming, I think we win this. Skarner's really strong, I guess. He's 8 and 1, I didn't even notice. Oh, the Vigard dies. Jesus, they cannot dodge my spears today. Goodness. Okay. I guess uh, Middle East Spear is just a point and click. Nice. No! <laughs> Sad. Alright, well, a win is a win. Some of you might be here because you wanted to pick up a fun new support pick, but might find the picks mentioned before to be a bit too crazy. For you all, I have a more standard option, that being Jarvan support. I actually have made videos on Jarvan support before, but that guide is sadly outdated due to the item changes over time. The general idea of Jarvan support is to play like a standard engage champion such as Nautilus and Leona, with powerful roams and kill setup with CC. Jarvan comes with some extra tools though that allow him to flourish in different ways. The first is his flag, which has a lot of interesting properties. The flag applies an attack speed buff in a wide range to all allies, which means it can apply effects that trigger upon empowering allies. This means putting down the flag anywhere near an ally automatically procs Aerie multiple times, giving lots of shielding power. 
The flag plus airy also doubles as a great poking tool in lane, as the flag has a generous hitbox and decent damage. You'll want to put points into flag so long as you're still in lane, which usually means 3 or 4 points before swapping to Q-Max. Most lane phases will consist of spamming flag on the enemy bot laner to apply constant pressure until you see an all-in angle. Jarvan's Q is also very helpful for support as it shreds armor upon contact. The value gets almost as high as Black Cleaver, so it's a great tool for helping your ADC deal more damage. As far as the rest of Jarvan's support goes, it's about what you could expect from a Jarvan jungle. Face checking with flag, roaming and ganking with creative angles with EQ, and easy teamfight setup with R. Not much else to go over, so just enjoy the Jarvan support game. Ribbon in the poppy seems like ass. Oh yeah, I mean, like, we pretty much just have counters across the board. <laughs> Love the no rune Belveth. True! Alright, well, I guess we wait around for a couple more minutes and then play a 4v5. Okay, but usually if somebody's client is bugged, would it not just, like, force the game through by now? And then just make one, one of the people AFK? Up oh, and right as I speak. Also, we don't remake this, even if our jungler never comes back. I just like playing out 4v5s, it's fun. Oh my god, I missed. <laughs> FF, no, for real. Actually. Jarvan is like especially juicy in the server though, because if I EQ, my E will proc the spell shield and then I'll still knock her up. I might not be fine actually. I missed again! Oh my god. How do I miss two flags in a row? That's crazy. Hey, you know what? It's fine. Every single time I, I mess up my flag, I just bait somebody on their team to die. Okay, cool. So our Belveth was DC'd for two minutes and Nunu invaded none of our camps. So with Jarvan, I like to put three points E for the poke in lane, but then after that I max Q. Some Jarvan supports will go five points E, but I think it's like a mega waste. It would have been hilarious if I missed that one too. Okay, nice. See if I can bail Poppy out here. Maybe Riven will try to dive. Nice! But see what I'm saying about how, like, this is a good pick in the server? I've already proc'd Aerie 42 times this game. I mean, unless Nunu dives us, aren't we just, like, fine? That was, that was Blitzcrank old, by the way. Like, <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> Our rise is getting mega destroyed. Oh, did Poppy DC? Did she get killed by Riven one more time and then she just quit the game? Alright, 4v5 it is. I'm kind of looking at this Lux right now, by the way. She's a big shutdown. It was almost decent. Lux is just so strong though. We kind of needed that poppy. Also, wait, did Rise just quit? Oh, the Belveth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have Ignite and ult. I would love to try against the Lux. You know what? Fuck it. We probably lose the game if we don't, so... Big, big. That's huge. We have a fighting chance now. First your internet was black and now your power's flicking. Oh, it's sad. Minions? Nice. 
Alright, here's the question. Does Zaya have the capability to just 1v9 the game? So how do you even win a 3v5? Do we just have to, like, go three lanes and then just pray that, like, we can just mega outplay every situation? Because if I flank one lane, then we pretty much, like, auto-lose the other side of the map. Okay, Poppy's back. 5v5. Winnable. I'm not gonna flash. I might need this to engage. We're like far behind enough that I'd rather just save my flash for a big play later. Ryze might be 0 and 9, but he has two items. He's like actually like maybe a champion if we were to 5v5. Okay. Oh, that was okay. A little too far, maybe. I mean, I can certainly press R on somebody here. Okay, maybe, maybe, maybe. Nice! Okay, big shutdown. No, why is it actually winnable? Wait, he's trolling. Wait, we're trolling. Well, Zaya's dead. There goes all of our damage. Run! Fully. I didn't. I, I like did not notice that the Nunu was AP until just now. If this game goes on for another 20 minutes, I can sell all of my Edos for crit. True. What the fuck was that Blitzcrank doing? Jesus. Oh god, they kill with the redemption. That's funny. Please do not run a down mid with the Baron. Please. We are not 100 Thieves. We are not running a down mid with Baron buff. They have Nunu, Blitzcrank, Riven. Please do not go mid. Wow, look at this. Riven's trying to flank. That's crazy. Who would have thought? Cool. Alright, we lose the entire game. Nice. Okay, we don't lose the entire game somehow. Rise scaled, let's go, side lane beast. Riven is ending the game. I can ult the server, by the way. 
Just kidding, I can ult the Lux. Okay, I got a flash. Lux flash being down might be big later. Oh, uh, Riven's behind us. Riven's behind us. Ah, tried to join that. Couldn't get there in time. Oh, nice, uh... Nice W from Poppy. Okay, we end the game. Oh my god, we won. Just kidding, or I can miss. Awesome. Well, we end the game anyway, it's fine, it's fine. Nice, not even close. <laughs> yeah, look at my honor options. I can honor Rise, Zaya, or the enemy team. The final pick I have for this video is Azir, who I saved for last because Azir doesn't exactly fit into any specific support box. He can do a bit of it all, whether it's poking, pressuring lane, roaming, and even engaging. But before I get into all that, first I need to tell a little bit of a backstory on this pick. A few years ago, back when I was still a gold player, I thought it would be fun to try and hit gold on every role in the game on different accounts. I did my bot lane account first, in which I pretty much only played Jinx and Trisana. During this climb, I stumbled across an Azir support, and let me tell you, it was borderline one of the most unfun and possible things to play against. In hindsight, I still didn't know much of Azir's cooldowns, and therefore likely missed a lot of punish windows, but in the moment, it felt like Azir had near infinite range and damage early on. So when it comes to this pick, the goal is to make the enemies feel like that through the range of his W and Q. It's important not to spam Q often, as it costs a hefty amount of mana, but you can use the illusion of the threat of the ability to keep enemies zoned off. Due to the range of Azir's W, you can simply place soldiers down at max range, and poke the enemies slowly until they're forced to play out of range of your soldiers. If you can get to the point where enemies can't walk in range of the soldiers at all, you've basically won. Since Azir's W can hold multiple charges, you can effectively just place the same soldier over and over again, which can be especially useful when you want to hold the wave in a specific spot and don't want the enemy bot lander to walk up and push. Placing the same soldier in the same place right in the exact range that the enemy would need to stand in order to hit the wave is one of the great pleasures in this game. Once you get to mid late game, the focus changes from dealing damage to engaging. Knowing the Shurima shuffle is necessary for this pick, which is when you place a soldier down, dash to it with E, and then before you get there, you Q the soldier forward, which will send you flying in that direction. You can then press R backwards to get the ultimate to travel a large distance, which will be your primary engage. The W E Q maneuver is also a great way to travel across the map quickly, although the E cooldown is quite long early, so be careful about that. With this hybrid playstyle of pressuring lanes early and hard engaging later, you'll always have a game plan with Azir's support. To complement this, I like building a Zanyas at some point, as well as other somewhat tanky items like Seraphs. Hear me out, what if I just go AP? Like, what if I just went, like, Staff into Zanyas and I just, just like, super tanky? Hey, that went pretty well. vision in the bush Wait. do they just have vision in every bush what is this Actually, you know what? Yeah, having all this mana feels really nice. Feels like I can do so much more. Never thought of tier. Well, it's like if I'm gonna go a lost chapter item, it's like Archangels is just the best one for sure. Especially since it's like the whole entire point of engages here is that like, or the old engages here is you go like, uh, what was it? Leandris, Zanya's Abyssal Mask or something like that. It's like the point is you want to be tanky, right? And it's like Archangels is the the, the tanky lost chapter item, so. Oh my god, wait, I just, I just took so much damage. 
Jesus. Okay, my bad. Oh, also the other thing on Azir support is that I like maxing E better. Like, if you look at the cooldowns, it lines up, right? Because it's like, you have a play pretty much any time your E and Q is up, but your Q is on a shorter cooldown. Q goes from 14 to 6, E goes from 22 to 16. It's like, you want your Q and your E to, like, line up as much as possible. Nobody cares about Q uptime if you don't have E to go with it on Azir support. Hi, Timo. I'm just gonna walk at her until my Q comes back, I think. Oh, Zoe's here, Zoe's here. Oh, I, I shuffled her in the wrong direction, that's my bad. Do I shuffle this, by the way? I think she walked up far enough that I could've... Like, I could've shuffled towards her and then... flashed behind her, so when she jumps I can, like, just... Or that, that works too. Or they, they could just both walk up. They were they were playing so disciplined and then they just both walked up together. That was so weird. <laughs> I still die, but you know, I mean like, I think it's fine, right? That's their jungler, so we just get the dragon. Bro, <laughs> no, 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 there's no way that's what I do, that's crazy. Nah, I'm boosted, bro. I was like totally fine, I just needed to EQ out, and then I just vomited on my keyboard. So what's the Azir support sauce? Apparently it's, um, fail all of my EQs, but then get like one good engage and then win the game. That actually didn't even go that badly, I'll be honest. Wait, this Zoe is doomed, by the way. Oh. <laughs> I thought the shield would save me. I thought it'd be enough. Okay, you know what? It's whatever, it's whatever. Why is that guy so... Please, 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 please. Oh my god. Is it enough? Okay, nice. <laughs> you know what? I might not be playing very well, but I'm having fun. And at the end of the day, that's really all that matters, right? <laughs> Sarah's shield. I don't- this build does feel good. Archangel Zonyas does feel good. I feel like if I wasn't playing like shit... I- okay, I guess despite the fact that I'm playing like shit, I feel like this build is, is definitely the, like, the move.
I don't get out of here. Oh! You know what? It's fine, it's fine. It's a zoning ult, zoning ult, zoning ult. You know what? I made one good play at the end of the game. You know, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We made like like two decent plays this game. <laughs> I knew Timo was around somewhere. I, I, okay. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Usable footage. <laughs> yeah, lane phase into, into just that last Baron. Yeah, yeah. Nah, I might use it anyway. It's kind of funny, like when I shit the bed, no? And with that, the 5 off meta supports guide is complete. I hope at least one of these picks can find a good home in some of your games. I also want to mention that in celebration of this video releasing, I've added 5 off meta supports, pins, and sticker sheets to my merch website, so go check those out with the link in the description. I streamed all of these games on Twitch, and I also have a Discord server where you can talk about these picks and get stream and video notifications, links to both will also be in the description. I also have a Ko-fi page, and any tips are highly appreciated. I'll see you next time, bye!